Could we be on the brink of the Gog Magog war? In today's video, we're going to be answering the question, when will the Gog Magog war take place? And we're going to be taking a look at all the different views when it comes to this Bible prophecy. And so before we jump right into it, I want to just encourage you, if you enjoy learning about Bible prophecy and about the Bible in general, we want to ask you to subscribe to this channel so that you can continue to see our content, continue to learn more about God's word and the prophetic events that are unfolding right before our eyes. And so let's jump right into it. If you know anything about this war in Bible prophecy, you know that it's it's outlined in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. So in order to answer the question, when will this war take place? I think it makes sense that we would have to look at the context of where these chapters lie in the book of Ezekiel. So if you go back a few chapters and we look at Ezekiel chapter 36, Ezekiel begins to prophesy to the land of Israel to begin to bear fruit once again. And so this is exactly what it says in Ezekiel 38 verse 8. It says, O mountains of Israel, you will put forth your branches and bear fruit for my people Israel, for they they will soon come. So Ezekiel begins prophesying that there is going to be a return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. So he begins telling the land to begin bearing fruit. And he goes on to say, I will multiply men on you and the waste places will be rebuilt. I will multiply on you man and beast and they will increase and be fruitful. And then in verse 24, it says, for I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands and bring you back into your own land. So let's take a look at this chapter and you can go ahead and read all of it in your own time. Let's take a look at this and understand that this has been fulfilled. I want to read you some quotes this is an article from the Jerusalem Post. Many of you know, if you study uh, the history of Israel, that Mark Twain, uh, who is, you know, a well-known American author, he made a visit to Israel in 1866. And this is what he wrote about it. He said, and this was before Israel was officially a nation, right? But he visited that area and he, this is what he said, quote, it is a desolate country whose soil is rich enough, but is given over wholly to weeds, a silent, mournful expanse. A desolation is here that not even imagination can grace with the pomp of life and action. We never saw a human being on the whole route. There was hardly a tree or a shrub anywhere. So Mark Twain makes a visit to this region of the world and he is explaining that it it is totally desolate. He said, not a tree or a shrub in sight. So that's 1866, right? And so if we skip forward, we saw in 1948 that Israel was reborn as a nation, right? This prophecy began to be fulfilled that the Jews would begin to be gathered from all over the world back to the land of Israel and that the land of Israel would again become fruitful with man and beast and crops and all this kind of stuff. We'll get this. This is, this is where we are currently. It says, today, Israel is a leading exporter of agricultural products and technology, demonstrating the remarkable success of the Jewish, Jewish efforts in making the desert bloom. So what do I want you to see here? I want you to see that this Ezekiel 36 has been fulfilled in recent history. So we are picking up right in recent history. This has been fulfilled. The Jews have been brought back to the land of Israel. The land of Israel is once again fruitful, like Ezekiel prophesied, which was unthinkable. Back in the beginning of the 1800s, it was a total desolate desert land. And so then if you go to verse uh, chapter 37, this is the prophecy many people know of the valley of the dry bones. Ezekiel sees these dry bones and God tells him to begin to prophesy to these dry bones that they would live again. And so to me, this is a great picture of even the Holocaust. What we saw happen in World War II, these dry bones, what is this a picture of? It's a picture of the death of, of hundreds of thousands and millions of Jews that were killed. These dry bones, it said these people were dead, right? It looked totally hopeless. And, Eze and he t God tells Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and they will live again. The un we've seen the unthinkable happen. The Jewish race that, the, the, you know, Germany, Nazi Germany tried to exterminate them from the planet, but they failed. And God has not only caused them to live again, but he's brought them back to a fruitful land. So this is where we pick up in chapter 38, where it starts to talk about the Gog Magog war. So you can see if chapter 36 and 37 have been fulfilled, surely 
we are about to see the fulfillment of chapters 38 and 39, right? This is, this has all recently been fulfilled. And so I want to talk to you about some of the main points when it comes to this war. Firstly, let's talk about who's involved before we jump into when it's going to be fulfilled. It will help us, right? To understand who exactly what nations are involved here. So let me read you this. This is verse two. He says, son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. So let's pause right here. Ezekiel is told to prophesy against a man called Gog. So Gog is a man. Magog is the land, the land that he is the prince of. It's in it specifies saying Rosh, Meshach and Tubal. And so most scholars agree that this is referencing what is modern day Russia? Okay, modern day Russia. So he's prophesying against this leader of Russia. And then if you go down uh, to verse four, he says, I will put a hook in your jaw and bring you out and all your armies and horsemen, bringing them down to Israel. And verse five, it says Persia, Ethiopia, and put all with them. So we're seeing three more nations. And then it says in verse six, Gomer with all its troops and Beth Togarma from the remote parts of the north with all its troops. So we see other nations here. So Russia being the main nation in verse two. And then what is it talking about? Persia is modern day Iran. And we can see in the world that we're living in today that Russia and Iran have a very close relationship and they hate Israel. Okay, so we can see part of this is unfolding. And then if you go on, Ethiopia, most scholars agree, is modern day Sudan. Put is talking about modern day Libya and Gomer. Most people agree is Turkey. Some scholars say Germany, but I believe it's most likely talking about Turkey. And so we see all these nations forming a coalition to come against Israel. And so I want to now point out to you a couple important things that stand out about this war. Uh, firstly, firstly being why do they come down to invade Israel? It says that they're coming down for spoils. And we can see this in verse 12. It says that they're coming against them to capture spoil and to seize plunder. To seize plunder. It says in verse uh, 13, have you assembled your company to seize plunder and to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods and to capture great spoil? So this is important to understand that Russia, which is the main figure of this war, what are they coming after? They're coming after spoil. And what's interesting is that, uh, you know, this could be referring to the natural gas. We see that Russia for, for a long time has been a great supplier of natural gas. But just recently, within the past 10 years, Israel has discovered natural gas and they're building all these pipelines to be able to, to supply natural gas to much of Europe. And so really now we can see that Israel is a great competitor for Russia. So perhaps you know, and I'm just thinking out loud here, perhaps this could be talking about they're coming after that natural gas. But we see if Persia is a part of it, which is Iran, Iran probably has a secondary cause. We know that Iran has a religious, they believe that they are called by Allah, right? Iran is an Islamic nation. They believe that they are called by Allah to destroy Israel. So they're coming for religious reasons, but it seems as though Russia is coming after spoil. And so that's the first thing to recognize about this war. The second thing we want to recognize, especially when it comes to pinning down the timeline of this war, is it says that it happens when Israel is living securely. So we see this in, let's read verse 8. It says, after many days, you will be summoned in the latter years, you will come into the land that is restored from the sword in the latter years. What is that talking about? The end times, the time that we're living in right now, after the land has been restored, like it says in chapter 36 and 37, which we've seen happen. It says, whose inhabitants have been gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste, but its people were brought out from the nations and now they are living securely all of them. And it goes on in verse 11. It talks about unwalled villages. It says that they are at rest and living securely. And that's when they come to invade. So we have to understand that, that this war is going to take place at a time that Israel is at rest and living securely. Okay. So now I want to talk to you about the different views of when this war 
could take place. And so some people believe that this war will take place before the rapture, before the great tribulation. Perhaps we could see it happen very soon here. We see uh, a lot of these nations already in a coalition, in agreement, right? So this war very well could happen in the very near future. Some scholars believe that the Psalm 83 war may happen first, uh, it, which is possible, but we can see that it could happen very quickly. And one of the reasons that many scholars believe that this war will happen before the tribulation is because what it says in chapter 39, that after this war, it says it's going to take them seven years to, to burn through these weapons, that they're going to use the enemy's weapons, right? After God defeats these nations that come against Israel that I just listed, God is going to defeat them supernaturally, right? So that's what's going to, that's how it's going to end. But it says that for seven years, they're going to, they're going to burn this fuel. And it says it's going to take them seven months to bury the dead. And so if it's going to take seven years to burn through this fuel, that's why many scholars believe that this has to be something that's going to happen before the great tribulation. Another reason that it could happen before the great tribulation in the very near future would be that perhaps this could set the stage for the antichrist to rise up and make some sort of peace treaty with Israel. As they're coming out of this time of war, right, it would make sense that that could set the stage for this Antichrist figure to rise up and make a peace treaty. Um, another reason that, you know, I've been thinking about lately, if you know about Bible prophecy, you know that the Jews are going to rebuild their temple at some point before the middle of the tribulation. So perhaps in the very beginning of the tribulation, perhaps before the start of the tribulation, Israel's going to have to rebuild their temple. But if you know, uh, there's something on the Temple Mount right now called the Dome of the Rock, right? Which is the, a Muslim temple. So something's going to have to happen where that Muslim temple comes down and the Jewish temple goes up. So there's going to be some, there's got to be some kind of defeat or treaty or something happening, uh, some kind of shift in, because right now the, the Muslim, the Islamic nations are really the main character coming against Israel right now. So at some point, there's going to have to be a switch with that. And that's why many scholars believe that this war could be very much that, that the Islamic nations are going to be destroyed so that that Dome of the Rock, that Muslim temple can be torn down to make way for the Jewish temple to be rebuilt. So that's one view. Another view is that this could happen right at the beginning of the tribulation. Because we know that the tribulation is going to start with the Antichrist making that peace treaty when Israel is dwelling securely in the land, right? So that would make sense that perhaps once they're in this peace treaty, then this war may take place. It could take place more towards the middle of the tribulation, right? So that's kind of the other view. Maybe it's going to take place in the beginning, middle of the tribulation. And so that would make sense because of the Antichrist peace treaty. Uh, the third view is that this is the battle of Armageddon, which happens at the end of the tribulation. And so I can definitely see why many people believe this. To me, the greatest thing that, that would make you think this is there's, it talks about in, um, Ezekiel 39, verse 17 and 18, it talks about how every kind of bird is going to assemble and come and basically eat the flesh of these mighty men that have been, that have been destroyed, that have been overcome. And so it describes something very, very similar in Revelation 19 called the Supper of, of the Great God, where at, after Armageddon, that God calls on all these birds to literally come and eat the flesh of these kings and these people that have come against Israel. So very similar um, situation there. But one of, the, one of the problems with this view, why I think it may not be the Battle of Armageddon at the end of the tribulation, is that... It says that they're going to they're gonna have this fuel for seven years. They're going to use these weapons for, for seven years and burn them as fuel. I don't know that that would happen, be happening going into the millennial reign of Christ. And I don't have time to get on, into all the millennial reign of Christ. But it, it almost seems as though this would have to be something that would happen before that. And, you know, I'm giving you all these views, but I want to hear what you think in the comments. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you have more thoughts. Let us know in the comments. And this is the last view that I don't really agree with, uh, 
But the other, I would say one of the other main views is that this is actually going to happen at the end of the millennial, uh, which I don't believe. But it talks about in Revelation 20 that Gog and Magog are going to come and make war on the city of Jerusalem. And so, uh, you know, many people believe this because it uses the word Gog and Magog. But I believe that we can see that that's talking about the spirit of Gog and Magog. It's not talking about this exact same war. Um, And we can see that done throughout scripture. And this is very unlikely because I don't think you're going to be burying the dead for seven months at the end of the millennial reign because the earth is about to be destroyed, right? There's about to be a new heavens and a new earth. Uh, I don't think you're going to be, you know, I, I, I very highly doubt that this war is talking about the end of the millennial, but it is going to be the same spirit that rises up at the end of the millennial to make war on Jerusalem. And so, like I said, these are some of the main views. I'm sure there are a few others out there. So let me know in the comments what you think, but I definitely believe that there's a very strong chance that we could see this war happen very soon in the very near future. And so if you're watching this video, you want to make sure that you're ready for what's coming. Because the reality is, is that all these things, the the fulfillment of Ezekiel 36 36 and 37, it's all pointing towards the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming back to this earth and you want to be ready for his return. That's everything we see going on in the world today. It's all in the predetermined plan of God. We see it in Bible prophecy. And this, everything we see going on with Israel being reborn as a nation proves that the Bible is true and it proves that the God of the Bible is the God that holds the future and that he is the one and only true God. And so if you're watching this video and you would say, you know what, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready for the second coming of Christ. I want you to ask yourself, are you living for the Lord? Are you on fire for God? Are you serving him with your whole heart? Or maybe you've watching the, well, you're watching this and you've gotten away from the things of God. Maybe you were once in church, but you've, you've fallen away, but you see what's going on in the world and you can see the signs of the times that Jesus is coming back soon. And I want you to be ready. And so if you wanna make sure that you are ready for his return. I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. And I want you to pray this from your heart and really mean it with all your heart. Wherever you're at watching this, I want to encourage you to just bow your head and repeat this prayer after me. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again for me and that you are coming back for me. Lord, light a fire on the inside of me to serve you all the days of my life until Jesus returns in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you. Faith has action. So if you prayed with me, I want you to type in the comments of this video, I prayed the prayer. And when we see those comments, I'm going to continue to pray for you that you will continue to live out in these dark days, that you'll continue to live boldly and to shine bright with the light of Christ. Even in the midst of all these end time signs being fulfilled, God is raising up for himself a glorious church to display his power to display his light and his glory like never before. And we want to pray for you. So if you prayed with that, let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about when this war is going to take place. And also, if you want to learn more about Bible prophecy and about how the stage is set right now for the Antichrist to rise up, I'm going to link a video for you right here and you can go check that out and learn more about Bible prophecy. And until next time, God bless you.